patterns. Types of patterns in nature. Part 1. Introduction and Review. Hey friends, I'm Miss Sarah with Auburn Day School. And I'm Miss Katie. We're glad you're back with us. We've been talking about patterns. Patterns are all around us. They're in your house, they're with your toys, they're with your clothes, they're outside. To notice patterns, you have to figure out how things are the same and how things are different. Like these up here. That's right. Once you figure out how they're the same and different, you look for things that repeat. So let's try naming these patterns on the board. We're going to look at the top one first. First thing we want to do is see how they're the same and how they're different. So these are all the same shape. What shape do you see? That's like right. These are all rectangles. rectangles. Good. They're all the same size, same size rectangles. So what's different about these rectangles? That's right, they're a different color. So let's use the color to help us name the pattern. Ready? Green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow. Very good, so we could call this pattern green, yellow, because mm -hmm. that's the part that repeats. Green, yellow, repeat. repeat. Green, yellow, repeat. repeat. Green, yellow, and repeat. we could keep going, yep. All right, let's look at the next pattern and see if we can name that one. What shape do we have this time? This time we have squares, mm -hmm. that's right. Are they the same size? Pretty much. Yep, they're the same size. So what's different about these squares? It's the color again. So let's use the color to name the pattern. Green, green white, white. Green, white, white, green. Ooh. And then next would be white, you're right. Mm -hmm. So we can call this pattern green, white, white, because that's the part that repeats. Green, white, white, repeat. repeat. Green, white, white, repeat. repeat. Green, white, white, repeat. repeat. It keeps going. All right, one more pattern on the bottom. What shape is this one? Back to rectangles, rectangles again. <laughs> and are they the same size? Pretty much. Yep, so the same size. So what's different? The color. Good. Green, Green yellow, yellow, purple. Green, yellow, purple. Repeat. Green, yellow, purple. Repeat. Good. I think you were starting to see the pattern. Green, yellow, purple. Repeat. Green, yellow, purple. Repeat. Green, yellow, purple. Repeat. I have a joke for you. Mm -hmm. Pete and repeat were sitting on a log. Pete fell off. Who was left? Well, repeat. Okay. Pete and repeat were sitting on a log. Pete fell off. Who was left? Repeat. Pete and repeat were sitting on a log. Pete fell off. Who was left? Oh, I get it. I keep saying repeat and you keep going. <laughs> yeah. So patterns can repeat like this and patterns can grow and patterns can decrease. That means they can get bigger in one way and they can decrease in one way. Let's look at a growing pattern. That's exactly right. We learned about these last week. Right. So remember, the growing pattern has a specific rule each time. When you're using a growing pattern, that means that it's getting bigger every time. So we're going to do a pattern of adding one every time. So we started with one, we repeated that, and add one more. Now we have two. So two. our rule here is to add one. Okay, so let's do the same thing again. We're going to repeat this part of the pattern. So we want to have two repeat. right here. So there's our repeat. And our rule is to add one. One more. See how it got bigger? Now we have one, two, three. Three. You know, this looks like something I have in my house. I bet you do too. Or if you don't, you've probably seen them. So let's repeat the okay. three. Yep. So we repeated that. What's and our, our rule? rule says add one. One more. What does it look like? Yeah, it stairs. does. It looks like stairs. Very good. So, so that's what a growing pattern would look like, an example of one. Exactly. Now I want to show you a decreasing pattern. And with this one, I have a pretty fun finger play that goes with it. What do these look like, Miss Katie? Uh, it looks like rain. Yeah, it is raining. Little raindrops. Yeah. How many do we have? Let's count. One, one two, two, three, four, four five. five. Five little raindrops. Can you show me five? Good job. 
five little raindrops dancing on the walk, pitter patter, pitter patter, because that's the way they talk. Out comes the yellow sun shining in the sky, and one little raindrop goes away. Bye, bye, bye. A decreasing pattern. We started with five, and now we have four. four. Show me your four fingers. Four little raindrops, make them dance, dancing on the walk. Pitter patter, pitter patter, cause that's the way they talk. Out comes the yellow sun shining in the sky and away goes a raindrop. Bye, bye, uh -huh. bye. So how many do we have left? One, two, two three. three. Show me your three fingers. Three little raindrops dancing on the walk. Pitter patter, pitter patter, because that's the way they talk. Out comes the yellow sky, sun shining in the sky. Away goes a raindrop. Bye, bye, bye. How many are left? Two. Two. Two little raindrops dancing on the walk. Pitter patter, pitter patter, because that's the way they talk. Out comes the yellow sun shining in the sky. Away goes a raindrop. Bye, bye, bye. One little raindrop dancing on the walk. Pitter patter, pitter patter, because that's the way it talks. Out came the yellow sun shining in the sky, and, and away, away goes the raindrop. Bye, 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 bye. How many do we have left? Zero. Zero. Mm -hmm. That's a decreasing pattern. We went from five all the way to zero. What was our rule with that one? How many did we take away? That's right, we took one away each time. That was a decreasing pattern. Mm -hmm. Now we can see lots of patterns outside. You might've noticed that this week and they're actually really pretty and fun to find. They draw your attention because they repeat and it's really fun to look for them. Yeah. But what's kind of different about these is that you may not be able to count them, but you will see that different parts of them repeat. So we're gonna read a book called Raindrop Plop. And during this read aloud, I'm gonna point out some of the patterns that we're gonna learn about today. So follow along on our read along. Raindrop Plop by Wendy Chiette Lewison, illustrated by Pam Paparoni. Read with permission by Viking Publishers. One little raindrop, dark, dark sky. Two little raindrops, clouds go by. Three little raindrops, splat, splat, splat. Four little raindrops, boots and hat. Do you see patterns in this picture? I do. I see branch patterns. I see that little pine tree over there, those branches. I see window patterns. I see raindrop patterns. I see a fence pattern. There are lots of different patterns in this book. Five little raindrops, shiny red coat. Do you see patterns in this picture? What about on those daisies? I see petal patterns there. The grass, that looks like patterns. Even the feathers on that bird. Those are patterns. I see branching patterns in the leaves. Six little raindrops, bright blue boat. Do you see where the raindrops have plopped into the pool? Those circular patterns around it are patterns. Ripple effects. Seven little raindrops Plop in a cup. Eight little raindrops, umbrella up. I see patterns on the ball. I see patterns on the pool. I see ripple patterns. There's even a pattern in the chair. Do you see the patterns? Do you see the scalloped pattern on the mug? Nine little raindrops, puddle fun. Ten little raindrops, still no sun. I see the ripple effect. I see branching patterns. Do you? 
too many raindrops. Run, run, run. Those raindrops make wonderful patterns. Back in the house now. That is that. Off with the raincoat. Off with the hat. <clears throat> Ten little toes in a nice warm tub. Nine soapy bubbles. Scrub-a-dub-dub. Did you know that bubbles are patterns too? Eight fluffy towels, soft and white. Seven brass buttons, shiny bright. I see patterns on her wallpaper. I see patterns on the rugs. Patterns are everywhere in this book. Six tiny marshmallows float in a cup. Five small pretzels, gobble them up. Do you see a pattern on the tablecloth? Do you see patterns on the wallpaper? Four furry squirrels want something to eat. Three hungry birds, tweet, tweet, tweet. Two bright eyes, what do they see? Out of the window, out by the tree. Do you see patterns on the chimney? That's a new one. And raindrops stopping one by one. No more raindrops. Sun, sun, sun. Stem extension, ripple effects. Materials, bowl, water, pipette. For this demonstration, you'll need two glasses of water, a pipette, and you can get some food coloring if you would like. You'll want to make sure both glasses are full. Then you'll take the pipette and stick it into the water. Squeeze it, you'll see those little bubbles, and when you let go, the water will come up into the top. Now, use the pipette dropper to slowly drop a few drips of water into the jar and see if you can see the ripples coming around. Do you see all those ripples? Let's see if we can see those in slow motion. Yeah, you can really see it when you go slowly. That's awesome. All right, we're gonna try it with water, with food coloring too, and see if that makes it any different or makes it easier to see. Wow, look how cool that looks when you put the food coloring in. Then I'm gonna take my pipette and do the same thing. I squish it and let go so it lets the water up. Let's watch the ripples. Wow, do you see the pattern, all of the rings? Let's watch that one in slow motion too. Pretty cool. When you finish, you can kind of experiment, add some more food coloring. We tried dripping some of the food coloring water into the normal water. It still made ripples, but they weren't as easy to see. Well, it didn't make it any easier, but it was still kind of fun to watch the blue dissolve into the clear water. So you try it out at home, get something that you can use as a dripper and try to make some ripples. Part two. Describe and identify patterns. In the book, Raindrop Plop, we saw lots of different patterns. Some of them were like branches on the trees or feathers on a bird. Some of them were even the ripples that were made when the raindrops plopped into a puddle. But those patterns did not look like this pattern. This pattern is a repeated pattern of squares. The difference is the colors. But the patterns we saw were not repeating patterns like this, but they were still repeating patterns. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You can see that in these patterns, you have like a big shape and it's made out of a lot of pieces that repeat. So that's where the repeating part comes in. Yeah. Now, these patterns, some people call them A, B patterns because you like the white square would be A, the green square would be B. These patterns, like in Raindrop Plop and some of the patterns that we see out in nature, 
are different named. They're called fractals. Isn't that a fun word? That is a fun word. Let's fractals. See Very cool. Fractals are shapes made up of repeating parts like the tree branch, the feather, the ripple that's made there, but it's also like a honeycomb. It's also giraffe skin. It's also like corn on the cob. All of those things are big shapes made up of repeating shapes. Mm -hmm. There's also some fractals that are branching out. Well, like the tree branch, mm -hmm. it branches out. And there are other things too, like lightning. Oh yes, lightning does branch out a lot. Yeah, fractals are really cool. Or I've got another one, snowflakes. <gasps> I love snowflakes. Oh my goodness. What? I've heard the word fractal before. Where? In a song, my favorite song, in a movie with snowflakes in it. Are you ready? I'm going to sing it for you. Okay. My soul is spiraling like frozen fractals all around. It's from Let It Go and Frozen. So a snowflake is a fractal. Frozen fractal. That's okay. what Elsa calls them because it's a fractal pattern. Oh, that's, that's cool. so cool. And I also love how she says swirling mm -hmm. because swirling is a type of pattern. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But let's do a few experiments with fractals. We're going to do some extension experiments right now so you can join us. The first thing you're going to need is a leaf, a crayon, and a piece of paper. STEM extension, leaf rubbings. Materials, leaves, paper, crayons. Our first experiment is a way that you can see fractals in nature. First of all, I want you to go outside and find some leaves. That's a magnolia leaf. We have a sycamore leaf. This was from my landscape. All of these neat leaves. Take a leaf, a piece of paper, and a crayon. Take your leaf and put it under your paper. And take your crayon and gently rub it on top of where the leaf is. And you should see some fractal patterns. That's right, these are the branching fractals. I love it. Can I try another one? Absolutely, and you can okay. use the same paper. Let me show you what mine looks like. Isn't that cool? That's the sycamore. I'm going to use the magnolia here. These are big ones. What's making the branching fractals? These are like veins in these leaves. So cool. They're kind of like the skeleton, too. So you might find leaves on the ground at your house or when you go on your stem strolls, you may find some leaves and you can come inside and buy your crayon and some paper. Oh, wow, look at that one. Check this little one out. Try that one. Okay. And notice the fractal pattern right there. Very cool. Oh yeah. So this is one way you can find fractal patterns outside around your house. STEM extension, bubble painting. Materials, water, dish soap, vegetable oil, food coloring, container with a lid, paper, and pipe cleaners. Hey, Katie, did you know that bubbles are fractals too? I love bubbles. They're so much fun. Yeah. But I thought you said we were out of bubble juice. We are, but guess what? We can make bubble juice at home with a lot of the stuff that you probably already have. Hmm. You want to learn how? Yeah, let's learn. Awesome. What you're going to need is some water, some dish soap, and some vegetable oil. You'll also need a measuring cup and a tablespoon. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm gonna let you start. Great. 
pour two cups of water into a container. Oh, I forgot, you need a container with a lid too. Okay. Okay, there's one. Two. Super. We're not gonna need that cup anymore or that water, so you can put it over there. I need four tablespoons of the dish detergent in there. One, two, three, four. four. Perfect. Now we don't need the dish detergent anymore, but we do need the vegetable oil. So now we need one tablespoon of vegetable oil. Pour, pour, pour. I'm almost out. There we go. Okay. The vegetable oil holds those bubbles together. Now we're gonna put our lid on it. And give it a little shake. So we have our bubble juice, but I, I forgot our wands. Oh yeah, we can eat bubble wands. Guess what? Did you make some? I did. <laughs> you can make your own bubble wand at home if you have pipe cleaners. All you have to do is take a pipe cleaner I've already made this one, but I'll unmake it so I can show it to you. There's a whole pipe cleaner. And you make a loop like that. And you twist it. Cool. I've seen where some friends have strung beads on here to make that a little stronger. I'm not gonna string beads because I don't have any. I'm just gonna do another twist to make that a little stronger. Now, bubbles, are better blown outside but since we are inside right now we're going to go ahead and do this and i'm the one who's going to clean it up so when you do your bubbles do it outside all right all you have to do now is dip this in the bubble juice make sure it's got a little right there and blow oh those are baby bubbles let's try again oh that's there pretty go. good you really have to experiment with how hard you blow. And for me, oh, I see that little film on there. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. You see if you can find that film. And then you blow. Um, you can also experiment with making smaller wands. Katie, do you want to try a little bit? Sure. I'm going to make a smaller wand out of this one. See if I can blow better bubbles. Oh, you're good at this. Oh my goodness, that was awesome. That was a big bubble. <laughs> Yep. Oh, I blew too fast. Ooh, you really are good at that. <laughs> oh, I'm going to catch your bubble. Oh. There okay. we go. Bubbles are really fun. Not only can you just make your own bubble juice, but you can also paint with bubbles. This is also an outside activity, but we're going to show you how to do it inside. I did my bubble painting last night, but I'm going to show you how to do it. You see that neat circle right there? That was a bubble. What I did is I took some of that bubble juice and I poured it in a little dish. And then I added a little bit of food coloring to it, about four drops. And I stirred it and I had my own little bubble wands too. If I was to drop this liquid on my counter, it might stain my counter. It might stain my rug. So is this an inside or an outside activity? Outside. But I'm gonna show you inside because guess who's cleaning it up? Miss Sarah. Yeah. So you blow bubbles. Oh, so they land on the paper. Yes, so ideally you'll blow them and they'll land on the paper and they'll pop and make a circle. I also made a green. So let's see if you can get the blue going. <gasps> you are awesome. And then it pops and makes a circle. You are much better at bubble mm -hmm. blowing than I am. I'm gonna let you do that bubble painting. So this can just go outside on your sidewalk or on your driveway. Ask an adult the best place to do it and take your jars outside. You probably don't want to put yours in a glass jar. You may want to put it in a Tupperware container or something mm -hmm. like that um, so that if you happen to drop it, it won't be the end of the world. So I also want to show them if you can look closely at all the bubbles on the top, you can see the fractal pattern. Yeah. See how all of those bubbles are connected to make that big foamy spot on the top. I love it. So you can see that pattern. Fractals are really fun. STEM Extension, Snowflake Snack. 
materials, pretzels, marshmallows. All right, let's practice making some fractal patterns with a snack. You're gonna need some marshmallows, you can use the big and little ones, and some pretzel rods. So what you'll wanna do is take your pretzel rods and start experimenting by putting marshmallows on the end. You just squish them really close together. Make sure you wash your hands before you do this. That way you can enjoy your snack and it'll be nice and clean at the end. So you can see that we're using the pretzels to make little branches off of the marshmallows, just like the fractal patterns and snowflakes branch apart. There are lots of different ways to do it. You can tell that Miss Katie and Miss Sarah are using theirs a little bit differently and going in a different order. So the fun part about this craft and snack is you get to be creative and decide how to make it. There you can see Miss Katie's just about finished hers up and you can see all of the fractal branches coming off of the middle of my snowflake. Let's see Miss Sarah finish hers. Ah, she used a unique way to do it, but you can still see the fractal pattern branching off. So give it a try and try your tasty snack. Stem extension. Borax snowflakes. Materials. Borax, hot water, glass cup, popsicle stick, pipe cleaners, yarn. All right, are you ready to make a frozen fractal? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> this is really not frozen, but it looks like a snowflake. This, um, you're gonna make crystals out of borax. This is something that an adult will need to get at the grocery store. It's called borax. And you will need borax, a glass, yarn, scissors, a craft stick, and a pipe cleaner. I'm a big fan of pipe cleaners. Mm -hmm. The first thing you need to do is you need to make a snowflake out of the pipe cleaner. I fold it in half, cut it, and then I'm going to take these two and fold them in half and cut it again. Then you're gonna start twisting, like take these two like that and twist it. Oh, this is where you start making your pattern with all the pieces of the snowflake branching exactly. off the fractal. Exactly. Now this is one part of the fractal. The crystals will also use the same little shapes to, to make more. a big shape. Mm -hmm. you, won't, you won't be able to see it. It's gonna be really cool. You're gonna love it. You can do a snowflake shape if you want, or you can do a different shape. I chose a snowflake since we're talking about frozen fractals. So there's my snowflake. Now you need to make sure that your snowflake fits inside the glass without touching an edge. So I'm gonna cut off a little bit of my ends so it will fit in there. Perfect. Take your yarn because it's going to hang and you tie it around your snowflake. Just like that, so it hangs. And what's it gonna hang on? A I'm popsicle stick. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna cut off that little tail because I don't want that tail. And I'm gonna tie it around the popsicle stick. Gonna do a little troubleshooting here. Remember, I said you don't want your snowflake touching any part of the cup. Uh oh, when I put it in there, it is definitely touching the cup. So, Too long. you have any ideas of how we can make it shorter without having to untie the whole thing? I know. What if we twist it? Awesome. There we go. Super. You now, want to test it first to make sure it's not touching anything before you do the water and the borax. So what you need to do now is you need to put some water in your cup. So we'll take Mr. Snowflake out and pour that water in there. You didn't even need to use that measuring cup yet. I'm gonna put it about to there. Now what you need to do is you need to heat this water. There are two ways you can heat it. 
this is definitely a time when you need an adult to help you because I don't want you to get burned. Um, so you can have the adult either put it in the microwave, microwave or you can use a pot on your stove top and pour that water in there. If you use the microwave, you might be able to keep it in this glass. But remember when you pull the glass out of the microwave, it's gonna be hot too. So all you're doing is you're heating up that water. Let's pretend like we heated it up on the stove top over here. It's heated. And then you're gonna take a fourth of a cup of borax. This is a half of a cup. I'm gonna fill it halfway right to that line. So Miss Katie, go for it. We're pretending like that water is hot. She's pouring that in there, even it out. And you're going to pour that into that pot and stir it. Get a scoop. Until it is dissolved. And you till you cannot see the borax anymore. Now, if your water is not hot, like mine is not right now, you're still gonna see it in there. So that's what the heat does. The heat dissolves it. Oh, we just had a change. States of matter. Yeah, states of matter. So, if it was hot, it would definitely dissolve. Once it's dissolved, you pour it back in your cup, and then you hang your snowflake in there. Make sure that snowflake is submerged in that water. Oh, she's even making it a little longer. Then comes the waiting part. You wanna wait for a couple of hours. It could be all day, it could be 24 hours. You'll have to wait and see, maybe make a good guess as to how long you're gonna, it's gonna take. This one just took a couple of hours for me. This is what it looks like when you get done. A frozen fractal. Isn't that cool? You'll wanna try this at home. What's really neat about this borax is that your mom or an adult in your house can use this in their laundry and cleaning, and you can use it to make um, slime and all kinds of stuff too. There are other recipes you can use with borax. So um, I hope you'll try this at home and make your own frozen fractal and other neat things. Hey guys, we learned about fractal patterns earlier today, and now we're gonna learn about a new kind called spiral patterns. A spiral pattern is a pattern that has one center point and then it has shape that goes around it in a circular pattern and kind of revolves around the center. See our example in the middle? The center point is in the middle of the shape mm -hmm. and then you can see all of the yellow that's making big circles, kind of like rings that spiral around the center. Mm -hmm. I had some Play-Doh and I thought I would make my own spiral. So I started at the center. Good, here's our center point. And then I go around and around, broke there, <laughs> put it back together and around and around. And that makes a fabulous spiral. spiral. Yeah. And now you can find spiral patterns on a lot of places in nature. So I'm going to hold this one up so Miss Sarah can tell you about this spiral pattern. You may have seen this weed in, in your stem strolls. Um, we have them out in our park that we kind of call the jungle because I don't really like these weeds because they have these big thorns on them. They are super strong weeds. They're called walking sticks. Now, the neat part about walking sticks are the spirals. Do you see these little spirals? At different parts of the walking stick, the spirals will grow and they will grow and grow and then attach onto tree branches or poles or other weeds and they'll grow. The spirals are the things that help the walking stick grow up and attach to things. Spirals are important in nature. You will also see spirals on pine cones, pineapples, tornadoes, you might see pictures of those. Hurricanes, the big storms, watch on the Weather Channel and you'll see pictures of hurricanes that are spirals, just like that one. Um, in my yard, I have a fiddlehead fern that spirals. And you know, I can think of another part in a Disney movie that reminds me of a pattern. The spiral pattern reminds me of Moana when they have the island of Tefiti and they go and they put the heart in. There's a big spiral just like this. Look at all of those patterns in the movies we watch too. Yeah. 
There are patterns in nature, there are patterns everywhere. We are gonna make our own spirals. So hang tight and let's do the next extension. STEM extension, tornado tube. Materials, two water bottles, water, duct tape. Okay, it's time to make a tornado tube. You can make your own tornado tube at home. All you need are two empty water bottles and I recycle. These are ones that I found in my recycle bin. One of your water bottles needs to be about three quarters of the way full of water. This one's gonna be your bottom one. That will be your top to start with. You're also going to need some duct tape and some scissors. Fill your water bottle up three quarters of the way full and then take the empty one and place it right on top. Now I took two strips of duct tape. One is a full one and then the other one I cut in half. I found it easier to wrap around because you're going to take your tape and you're going to wrap it around the neck right there as tightly as you can and you're just going to squish it squish that tape because you don't want the water coming out now in our extension paper i said you could put some glitter in there if you want it that might make your tornado a little bit more fun so or some food coloring Food coloring, if you do the food coloring, I want you to take it outside and make yeah. sure this is an outside toy because it could come undone. And I, yeah, you do not want food coloring in your house. It will ruin your carpet. So I, that's why I didn't even bring food coloring out. But if you want to do it outside, you could, and it could ruin your clothes too. So glitter is a better option if you want some color. So I took that other piece right there and taped it around there. Now the water may leak out, that's okay. It's kind of a fun tornado Just tube for a while. You can make them over and over. So you have one and I have one. What you need to do is you turn it over and do the tornado twist. And then you can watch your vortex and spiral go down. You do it many times. Do you see it? Ooh, right there, that was that's a good cool. one. Maybe you can show it in slow motion, this baby. Yeah, that's cool. As you can see, my tornado tube is leaking. I made this one yesterday, so it's leaking a little bit. But that's okay, it might be a good outside. Oh, that one was cool too. So you can make your own spiral. Some people call it a vortex um, tornado tube. Have fun. So we've already learned about fractal patterns mm -hmm. and fractal patterns that branch. And we learned about spiral patterns. And now we have another kind we're gonna learn about. This one is called symmetry. Symmetry is when you can fold something in half, maybe down an imaginary line down the middle, and it's identical on both sides. See how this crab has pinchers here, pinchers there, an eye there, an eye there, same number of legs, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This crab is an example of symmetry. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And you can do some examples of symmetry at your house too. One of my favorite is the paper painting and folding. So take a piece of paper, fold it in half and crease it. And then get your favorite color of paint. Now I want you to paint. Katie's gonna do a little bit of orange painting on that side. And I'm gonna do a little bit of blue painting on this side. Whatever you wanna do. And this is kind of neat because you need to use a lot of paint. So let's see if we can make a picture that is symmetrical. I'm going to do a couple of dots too, I think. Well, makes sense. All right, we'll show what it looks like before, before we fold it. So right now it doesn't look the same on both sides. It looks pretty different. This is kind of like partner painting. Mm -hmm. Painting. You and I are both doing it. You fold it over and then you want to smooth it out. Press it down. And you have to do it before the paint dries. Yes. And you want to smooth it down everywhere there's paint. 
or you won't be showing symmetry. I might even turn it over. All right, are we ready? I'm ready. Let's see I what it looks like. We should have a drum roll. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah, and now it looks the same on both sides. There's orange and blue on both sides in the same pattern. I love it. These are beautiful symmetry painting. Did you know that sometimes you will have fruit and vegetables that sh are examples of symmetry? Let's do a little bit. Um, I can't tell that this is an example of symmetry. It's just a round orange. But if I take a knife and cut it in half, you will see that it is the same on both sides. Symmetry. So symmetry, yeah. How about, do you want to try kiwi? Sure, let's try kiwi. Kiwis are fun. So here's a kiwi. There it is whole. So let's cut it down the middle. That way? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, oh, does it look the same? Yeah, it looks the same on both sides. A kiwi is an example of symmetry. Put it back together, take it apart, and it's the same on both sides. How about one more? How about a tomato? Okay. Tomato's kind of cool. Here it is whole. We're gonna cut it in half. An example of symmetry. It's beautiful, that is isn't cool. it? Awesome. There are other fruits and vegetables that are examples of symmetry too, like a cucumber, an apple, um, even broccoli will mm -hmm. show symmetry as well. Very cool. We're gonna do um, another extension where you can use your Legos at home and show symmetry. STEM extension, Lego symmetry. Materials, Legos. For this extension, you might need a Lego base that you divide down the middle. We use some tape to divide it down the middle. You're going to start making a design, and you want to make sure that your design matches on both sides. So we put a green on the right side, and then a green on the left side. Then we put another green on the right side. Now we're going to put another green on the left side. That way it shows symmetry. You can add multiple colors, but remember, wherever you add that other color, add it in the same place on the other side of your design. You can even try layering your Legos, like Miss Sarah's doing here. But remember, if you add that color to one side, you have to add it to the other. You get to be as creative as you want with your designs, which is really cool. Red on the right side, red on the left side. And then at the end, you're gonna have a unique Lego masterpiece that also shows symmetry, which means it is the same on both sides. So get creative and make your own Lego, Lego masterpiece and then share it with us on our Facebook, Auburn Day School. So we have seen symmetry in the things that we eat and apples and oranges and kiwi and we've seen symmetries in pictures and we've been able to make symmetry with our Legos and with paint. And now I wanna show you some symmetry that's found in animals like this Ooh. butterfly. Do you see how both sides are the same? Yeah, if you folded them in half, it would be like making a mirror image of the butterfly. Exactly. How about the spider? Do you see it has yeah. the same number of legs on both sides? Mm -hmm. They are the same on both sides. Um, how about this tiger face? Isn't that neat how the stripes, not only are the stripes showing symmetry, but he has one eye on one side, another eye on the other. Yeah, yeah. very cool. One ear, one ear. I love it with that tiger. Um, how about this ladybug? How is it showing symmetry? That's right, with its spots. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And last one is a picture of that crab. Remember we had a picture of the crab? Now we're showing a live picture. Yeah, very cool. I want you to look for symmetry as we do the read aloud of whose nose and toes. See if you can guess which animal it is by its nose and its toes.
Whose Nose and Toes by John Butler. Read with permission by Viking Publishers. Whose Nose and Toes? Whose Nose and Toes? They are Tiger's Nose and Toes. Whose Nose and Toes? They are Pig's Nose and Toes. Whose Nose and Toes? They are Duck's Nose and Toes. Whose Nose and Toes? They are Rhino's Nose and Toes. Whose Nose and Toes? They are Giraffe's Nose and Toes. Whose Nose and Toes? They are Dog's Nose and Toes. Whose Nose and Toes? They are Monkey's Nose and Toes. Whose Nose and Toes? They are Cow's Nose and Toes. Whose nose and toes? They are crocodile's nose and toes. Whose nose and toes? They are elephant's nose and toes. I see tiger and pig and duck, rhino, giraffe, dog, monkey, cow, crocodile, and elephant. Do you see symmetry in these pictures? I see symmetry in tiger stripes. They are the same on both sides. I also see that he has the same eyes. on. They look the same on both sides. That shows symmetry. Do you see patterns in giraffe? I see patterns on giraffe skin. Do you see symmetry in monkey's face? I do too. Cycle patterns. Some patterns are really easy to see, like symmetry and spirals. When you look at it with your eyes, you can tell right away that it's a pattern. But some patterns are not as easy to notice, like the water cycle. The hmm. water cycle is a pattern. I, how is the water cycle a pattern? Well, we've learned that patterns repeat. The water cycle goes on and on and on. It repeats. The water cycle starts with evaporation where that water from um, collected water like lakes and ponds and even the water out on plants evaporates. It goes up in like a gas and then it forms clouds. It's condensation up in the sky. And then when the weather's just right, you will have precipitation in the form of ice or rain or snow. You remember the song we sang? Yeah. Let's sing it. it. Water travels in a cycle. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Water travels in a cycle. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It goes up as evaporation. It forms clouds as condensation and comes down as precipitation. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And then it starts all over again. Oh, that's where the pattern comes in because you go back and you repeat it. That's exactly right. I so see. the water cycle is a pattern that we don't see as easily as we do some of the other patterns that repeat quickly. It's kind of a slow repeater. Let's review. Hey, we've had so much fun learning about patterns in nature today. Let's do a quick review about some of the different patterns we saw. The first one that we talked about were fractals. Fractals are shapes made up of repeating shapes kind of like a snowflake. A snowflake was a fractal or a tree branch mm -hmm. or, oh, look at this one I found outside. That was from a, a bush. It almost looks like a tree branch. That's an awesome looking fractal right there. Um, this fern is a great example of a fractal. All the little pieces make mm -hmm. up a bigger shape. Those are branching fractals. Ooh. Can you show this one? Here's another type of fractal I found out on my back porch. A wasp nest, isn't that cool? So in nature, there are tons of examples of fractals. Mm -hmm. There are also um, spirals. We learned about spirals today. Mm -hmm. They start at a center point and then there are circles around it, just like on that, the spiral on that walking stick. 
exactly right. Exactly. And you may have made a tornado tube today. I hope you did. Those are kind of fun spirals. And we also learned about symmetry, where um, if you cut something in half or folded something in half and then opened it up, it would be identical on both sides. Yeah, that flower is a good example. If you put a line down the middle, it's the same on both sides. Show this leaf too. That's kind yeah, of cool because it that has a line already down the middle. So this one has a fractal. Yeah, there we go. It's a fractal pattern because you can see the branching veins, but it also shows symmetry. symmetry. Very cool. And we talked about cyclical patterns too, like the water cycle. It's a pattern, it's a cyclical pattern, and it goes on and on. It repeats. Pete. Hey, mm -hmm. I have a joke for you. Okay. Pete and repeat were sitting all <laughs> Pete fell off. Who was left? Repeat. Pete and repeat. Yeah, you can do that one too at home. So next week, we're going to be talking about patterns that we use in our daily lives to make our life easier. So we hope that you will join us. And if you want to try any of these cool activities, I know we had a lot of extensions because we wanted you to get to make patterns. So make sure you go to auburndayschool.com and find our unit page and you'll see all of the extensions that we did with directions and pictures for you. And you can always rewind and watch it again. Okay, we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. 